Hello and welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator the Motivator. And this is episode 27, Giant Slayers. Holy smokes, ladies and gents. Uh, what a time to be alive, right? Um, so much going on in the world, so many happenings. I appreciate you taking some time out of your day uh, or your week or whatever's going on with you. And, uh, and tuning into this podcast, uh, there's been so much outpouring of support and uh, the messages and the, and the comments and the shares and, the, and everything. It's, it's, it's very humbling. I, I really appreciate you guys uh, and all you do. Uh, I really appreciate the feedback. I really appreciate the material. Like I got a lot of things that, uh, that I'm going to get to, but man, I've had a lot over the past week that have come through uh, from you guys. And I want to get to that first before I get into any of the stuff that I had you know, plan before, because that's, you know, stuff that's on the forefront of your imaginations and your minds and whatever's going on in your lives. And let's see if we can, can dive in and address some of that stuff. So thank you uh, for that. If you guys are uh, listening on uh, any of the podcast channels, I appreciate that. If you, you would go in, you know, if you can leave a rating or review, share it uh, to whoever else you've got in your little network that will, uh, you think might benefit from it. Uh, if you guys are obviously watching here on YouTube, uh, I appreciate that as well. Uh, you guys are really, uh, really awesome. So I just want to say big thanks to all you guys uh, before we start jumping into to, to the episode today. And uh, yeah, let's just get started, shall we? All right, so let's hit it with a quick word of prayer and we'll roll right into it, all right? Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for giving us the tools, giving us the strength to defeat the giants in our lives, Lord. Uh, there's a lot that gets thrown at us from the, just the day-to-day -day grind, uh, but you are the, the center, you are the truth, you are the, uh, you are the, you are everything, you, you are what this is all about, Lord. Thank you for just uh, helping us keep focused on you. Lord, I ask that you be with me today. Uh, give me the, the words to say to convey this message to your fold, and anybody listening, or watching, give them the eyes to see and the ears to hear that we can just uh, all grow closer to you. In your heavenly name, amen. All right. <clears throat> Giant slayers. There's a lot of things in life uh, that can be giants to you. Whether it's, you know, your your physical fitness, your mental health, the spiritual walk, the whole podcast about these three pillars, Right. But it could be something like finances. It could be a relationship. It could be fear of public speaking. Something, something that is kind of an obstacle. Something that you think, man, I just can't take this thing on. I'm just, I'm just going to avoid it at all costs. Or something that I just, I'm never going to break through this, this hump. I'm never going to get over this burden, whatever it is. These, it's, it, it's. It's something in your in your life that you can't defeat, as it were, on your own. Or you don't think you can defeat on your own. So what do we do? How do we defeat these giants? It's pretty simple. Start by taking a step back and understanding exactly what it is that's this giant in your life. If it's a giant mountain of debt, okay... Have I made a budget? Have I sat down and talked to God and said, God, give me the tools to defeat this giant, this big pile of debt that I've got? And obviously God's not a, uh, he's not an ATM. He's not just going to boom, you know, your debt's wiped out. He could, obviously he could snap his fingers and make it happen. But generally that's not the case. Generally he gives you the tools, the knowledge, somebody that comes into your life and helps you break down your finances and set you on a path to clear yourself of that mountain of debt. He does that over and over again in the biblical story. And, and it's it's outstanding. All these giants that show up in the Bible. Giants are real. I don't care who, who you talk to. They're real. And there's several instances in the Bible where average people went up against these extraordinary creatures and overcame them, defeated them utterly. It's awesome. We're going to talk about those here in a little bit. But that's what it means to overcome these giants and slay these giants. You want to utterly defeat them that way. There's no hope of them ever coming back 
and, and plaguing you again because you have used those tools, you've used those resources, you've used your relationship with God, you've used something physical on this earth to take out that giant, whatever it might be. Biblically speaking, the giant slayers in the Bible, Abraham, Joshua, Deborah, David, you guys probably don't even know about, about Abraham slaying giants, we'll get to that in a minute. David being the most... Um, uh, prevalent I guess what did they have in common again they were all ordinary people generally speaking and they're humble in origins most of them they had a they had an intimacy with God they could talk freely with him and that that intimacy that 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 um that fear of the Lord that they developed too. That's the second thing. Intimacy with God and the fear of the Lord. Them understanding uh, what he's capable of, what you are capable of doing with him in your life. By using those two things, it gets into the third thing that they have in common is this supernatural courage to face these giants and these obstacles in their lives. So intimacy with the Lord, fear of the Lord, and supernatural courage. The third one builds off the first two, right? So your intimacy, your walk with the Lord, how you let him guide and direct you, trying to follow that straight and narrow path that he sets before us. Having fear of the Lord, knowing that, you know, he's like a parent. He's somebody you can disappoint. And if you if you don't walk that path, your salvation uh, uh, is obviously given to you. But, but if you become apostate and just reject the Lord, there's some severe consequences that come with that. So walking in those first two and giving you that spiritual and that physical discipline will let you have that mental, that spiritual, uh, supernatural courage to take on these giants. And that's what all these folk did. In Genesis 14, Abraham grabbed up about 300 men that he had, and he went and rescued his nephew Lot from a battle that was raging on between like five giant kings. And he went in there and he did it. It was like like the movie 300. Like <laughs> Abraham was a beast. He went in there with all his beastly dudes and they went in and they captured Lot and they probably, or not captured, they rescued Lot and they probably had to fight some giants along the way. It's in there, Genesis 14, read it. Obviously, after the Exodus, right? They get to the promised land or to the borders of the promised land. They send in the 12 spies. 10 spies come back. Oh, no, these giants are, are we, we are like grasshoppers to them. And, you know, this, this is in uh, Joshua. And this is at the end of uh, the Exodus, right? We're like grasshoppers in their eyes. And, and we just, there's no way we can go in there. We're, we're, the sons of Anak, they're just, we, we just can't take them. We're, we're, there's, there's no hope for us. It's like, dude, you just came out of Egypt, watched the plagues happen, went through the whole 40 years in the desert with all these supernatural things happening because God's with you and you don't think you can take out some folk in the promised land that he promised to you. That's what Joshua and Caleb came back and said, yeah, we can take those guys, let's do it. Let's go in there and annihilate these folk. And that's what they did. In the Transjordan region, they went and they fought King Og of Bashan and the King of Sidon, which is right there, uh, Outside, uh, in, near Mount Hermon, right? The land of the serpent, Bashan, right? <laughs> Funny. And they went in and they, they utterly defeated these guys. And they didn't just kill them. It was called the harem. Or Karim, harem, harem, one of those two. They went and they defeated everybody because they, they, they were abominations to the gene pool that God said, hey, you guys are giants. This is a defilement of mankind. Get them out of here. Wipe them out utterly. Because God was with them. They trusted the Lord was with them. And then they proceeded in the conquest of the of the, the promised land, all the Canaanites that were in there. And it wasn't just Canaanites, Canaanites, Jebusites, Hivites, Hittites, Perizzites. Uh, there's so many ites, ites that are listed there. Um, it's in like numbers and, and, and um, it's, in, it's in there. I had to go back and, and, and get it. It's in the Old Testament, right? In the Torah. But they go and they utterly wipe out all of them. They left a few little strongholds, but we'll get to that in, in a minute. Um, and drove them out of the promised land. 
they defeated giants, not like sort of tall people, like giants, giant giants, sons of Anak, look them up, <laughs> the Rephaim and all that jazz. That's that's not my podcast. That's a whole other another bit. If you want to talk about that, I'll, I'll, I'll direct you to some some good resources, right? Um, who else? Um, who we say Deborah, right? Deborah was one of the judges. Judges uh, Judges four. Um, they had the king of uh, was it Hazor, king, king of Hazor, right? Um, Jabin and Sisera. That's, that, that's what it is. I'm trying to. I, I, I read this the other day, and I'm trying to remember it, it all back now. So Jabin and Hazor in Judges 4, they came in and they had conquered all of the, you know, the Israelites with their 900 chariots or whatever it was. And they were under the thumb of the um, the Canaanites uh, because they were apostates, what Israel did. they <laughs> Oftentimes Israel Israel has this little protected bubble over them. They do well for a while. They get, they get apostate. And then God lifts the bubble up. They come in. One of the ites come in and wipe them out or like subdue them for a minute. Then he, then he sends a judge, raises him up and says, hey guys, stop being apostate from the Lord. He's with us all the time. If you guys would just, you know, come to him. And they're like, oh yeah. And then the judge takes him out and delivers him from the people. That's exactly what Deborah did. Deborah led a, led a group and utterly defeated Jabin and Sisera and, and redeemed Israel. She was a judge of Israel. Deborah, female. Bet you didn't know Deborah killed giants. Because guess what? Jabin and Sisera were Canaanites. <laughs> they were giants, right? It's what we deal with in our everyday life, right? These giants we defeat. The last one, obviously, we're going to talk about is, is David. You can find him in 1 Samuel uh, 7, where's my note? 17, right? David and Goliath. All of Israel was terrified of the Philistines, a clan of giants. They had escaped to, like, uh, was it Crete after the conquest or uh, what's that other island that's out there Sardinia somewhere like that and they were kind of like the Philistine seafaring people they came back and started inhabiting the Gaza Strip uh, what we know is modern day Gaza wonder why there's still problems there today crazy right because they weren't utterly defeated but I digress the Philistines had the giant of Gad Goliath and he was terrifying he was intimidating David comes up, you know, and he's and Goliath's like, oh, what am I, a dog? You commit me with a stick and, and a sling? And David's like, the Lord fights my battles for me. That's the biggest takeaway from this whole episode. The Lord will fight your battles if you give it to him. He will give you the tools. He'll give you the strength. He'll give you that supernatural courage to go out and face these giants. And what did David do? He took a sling a, sling, a slingers, slingers back in the day. If you don't know anything about slingers, they could take a rock and huck it. And it's going mock, mock Jesus, and it's going to hit the Goliath right in the center forehead, knocked him out. He took Goliath's sword and chopped his head off because that's how they knew how to kill giants. You got to chop their head off. Crazy concept, right? Um, he defeated Goliath. Not by his own strength or courage. He had he used the Lord to help him. He prayed and he helped him. He also picked up five stones. Why? Because Goliath had four brothers. He was waiting for the rest of them to show up. Later on, he does defeat them. When David becomes king, he goes and he defeats all the giants in the, in the, in the promised land. He goes and he utterly wipes out uh, all of Goliath's brothers and drives them out of, the, out of their area. Then you can find all that in 2 Samuel 21. Right, and the people are going to argue, oh, Goliath was just a Goliath, and blah blah. But they, the point is, all the evil, the giants generally represent evil, right, and and things that are not of God. And they went in and they utterly destroyed them. These giants in your life, all right. God wants you to take them out, and not be under the thumb and not be oppressed by these things. He wants you to have the courage to step up, ask Him to help you. Remember we talked about it in an earlier episode. I want you to pray something so profound that it makes God say, yes, yes. That sit on the edge of his throne and say, yes, that is what I'm talking about. Let's do this. He's not a genie. He's not an ATM, but he does. He's like a proud parent. You know, if you ever played sports and you scored a goal or a bat or a, or a touchdown or Pentagon or a mat or something like that, how proud your parents were of you when that happened. That's what God wants. He wants you to win. 
He wants you to conquer and take out all these, you know, just oppressive forces in your life, these giants in your life. And you can do that if you just give it to the Lord and he'll help you. Oh, crazy concept. He will help you because he loves you. Boom. Boom. Mic drop moment, right? That was my, I don't have sound effects. Mic drop. You are a giant slayer. I'm not even knife hand. You are a giant slayer. If you'll just allow yourself to be. You're a warrior in God's army. And you can overcome. I bet y'all didn't know some of that stuff about, about giants in the Bible. There's a lot of podcasts out there to talk about. And it's fantastic. I love it. Love it. Because this stuff's real. The Bible's the, the most, it's the, it's the realest. You got murder, you got action, you got war, you got love. Song of Solomon is an erotic novel to 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 your lady or your husband. And it's all about love at the end of the day. I oh, guys, I just get fired up talking about just how much God loves us and how much we can how much better we can be, how much more productive, how much more awesome we can be if we just give ourselves over to the Lord and let him uh, give us the tools and fight with us in these battles. It's awesome, man. Again, I, uh, so 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 much more. I guess we could we could go into, but I just I try to keep these things short. If you want to talk about this stuff offline, if you want to do a follow up later on, we can we can do that. Uh, but there's a lot more people a lot smarter than me that get into this stuff on a regular basis, and I can I can get you guys to to those folk. So, uh, all that being said, uh, let's end it with a word of prayer and then I will kick you guys to the weekend. Uh, thanks for tuning in, man. This is such a fun journey. I got so many more good episodes coming up. Uh, I just got to, got to film them <laughs> and record them. Right. Uh, so I get the time I'll make it happen. Uh, but until then, I really appreciate the reviews. I, re I really appreciate you guys sharing this, this, this stuff. I think it's exciting. Uh, so please do that. Like share, subscribe, comment, all that cool uh, influencer stuff that I'm not. I'm just trying to like get the word out, man. That's it. So thank you guys uh, for all uh, for all you do. All right. So Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for giving us this tools and thank you for giving us this moniker, Giant Slayer. We can slay these giants in our lives because you, Lord, are with us and you tell us not to be afraid. You give us supernatural courage because we have an intimate walk with you. And Lord, we fear you, but we know that you love us more than anything. And we thank you for that. Lord, I ask that you bless the people who tune into this, who are listening, who are watching. Uh, just let them, just shower them in blessings, Lord. Uh, if they're having a hard time, if they're going through struggle, Lord, give them peace. Give them strength and give them the faith to carry on and, and turn themselves back to you, Lord. Lord, people who are not listening, Lord, let's just uh, help guide and direct them here so we can guide them and direct them to you. That's what it's all about, Lord. Uh, I ask that you just uh, send us off into the weekend. Keep us safe. Uh, in your heavenly name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Again, really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, this is so much fun. Please keep the comments. Please keep the suggestions coming. Um, man, there's a lot of good ones coming up. Uh, and I'm going to get to them in turn. I promise. I got a whole pile of notes here uh, of things we're going to get to. So uh, thank you for all that. Uh, you guys stay blessed. I love you guys. Uh, Tobinator out.